Joining us to dig into it a little bit deeper, NYU Stern School of Business professor Arun Sundarajan and Global Business Executive uh, and Drunker Schools Senior Fellow Ryan Patel. Arun, let's go ahead and start with you. When we're talking about Amazon here, Heidi just sort of laid out what the strategy is and who they're going to be competing with. But I'll give you the example of Walgreens because Walgreens tried to go into this um, space. They bought Birchbox. This is an example of Amazon once again sort of being that disruptor, coming in and forcing all these other businesses to change their business models and compete harder, better, and faster, and they may not necessarily be able to do it. Absolutely. I think that once Amazon enters a market, um, a lot of the incumbents see a negative reaction on their stock prices, but often, like, you know, the disruption doesn't pan out. And I think what Amazon has demonstrated as being really, really good at is selling us stuff where you don't have to see the product or right. try it. Right. Um, so they're into fulfillment, they're into shipping, um, but the actual sort of physical world customer experience type retailing is not their strength. And so this will be a litmus test for Amazon to see if they can expand beyond e-commerce and become a player in physical world retail. All right, now Ryan, you say you can't really underestimate uh, the competition. You know, you take a Kroger, you take a Walmart, that they're very innovative and they can in <clears throat> fact compete. Well, you know, everyone talks about Amazon. You forget Walmart is there. Amazon entered the place for Walmart. Walmart has been very, very active when it comes to acquisitions. And look what Kroger has done. i just give you an example. Kroger has this brand called I Simply Truth. The, the Simply Truth brand has over $2 billion in sales last year, which is their organic line. This is from the Kroger. This is Kroger, Kroger side, which is huge for them to kind of get that increase. So it's not like Amazon's coming in and disrupting, but listen, Walmart and Kroger are not laying down. They're being very, very active, and it'll, it, you know, not to say that Amazon won't get there, but they're going to make it very difficult for Amazon to continue to go after this space, especially since, you know, right now, Amazon has to be really picky about what Kmart sites that they're going to look at taking and getting that cost down. Again, these are going to be showcase stores in the beginning before they make the rollout. You wanted to make a comment about Walmart. Yeah, I totally agree that, um, you know, it's very easy to underestimate Walmart today. But we have to remember that the original digital disruption of business was in the 80s with Walmart sort of computerizing the logistics and supply chain. Amazon actually raided Walmart's executive suite mm. in the late 90s, got sued. Um, I've seen Walmart make big steps forward in e-commerce. We just saw the chart, 40% year-over-year growth. And um, they actually have the physical world presence in the grocery and in the beauty sector. And so I wouldn't count them out. They've made some really smart acquisitions recently, Jet, um, Bonobos, and so on. And so they've got the talent as well. And so I really think that in the physical world meets the digital space, Walmart is the company to watch rather than Amazon. And you're watching Walmart, <clears throat> actually, I've been watching it compared to Amazon on groceries. I think Walmart has become a formidable competitor when people didn't necessarily think that it would be. So why couldn't it be in the beauty space? The, the principle is really the same, right? Absolutely. I think in the grocery space, it's particularly interesting because as they've sort of shifted the people who work in stores from manning the checkout counters as they've automated those, a lot of these people are now working assembling grocery orders and having people pick them up. They haven't sort of solved the last mile problem yet, but I think in the world of online grocery, a lot of it is going to be the customer covers the last mile rather than everything to home the way it is in Manhattan. Okay, and Ryan, you know, there is a distinction to be made. There are sort of some beauty household products, um, you know, that you could easily get at Walmart and have those orders fulfilled. And then there's the beauty products that, you know, Heidi was talking about, the things that you find at Sephora. These are two very different, you know, lines of makeup versus we're talking about um, generic moisturizers, soaps, things that you stock in your house. Well, th that's what Amazon, it's, they're the two different consumer base at the end of the day. You know, as like I mentioned, Walmart's trying to create their, increase their consumer base from what they have, and Amazon is trying to actually get to its consumer base because it hasn't been able to do that in the physical space. And I think when you can, again, think about this, if Amazon can push out their own margin products and their partnerships, it's a win-win when it comes to, at the end of the day, their, the logistical supply chain that they have the advantage on. And I think that's where they become that physical stop to be able to every Everybody to come through what the masses wants versus just a niche uh, driven consumer base that they, you know, maybe as Whole Foods, for example, is something that they're realizing they got to get bigger. Mm, that's an excellent point. Arun, Ryan, thank you. Great to see you both.